Welcome to Research Methods. So you may have a background in thinking that research is boring, intimidating, or unrelated to our clinical work or our life. You might have a genuine interest in science and the meaning of life. But why do we need to care about research? Because clinical and research skills are intertwined. Research is the acquisition of knowledge. One case is not enough. One participant is not enough. One study is not adequate. One theory is not adequate. How can we describe the Amazon rainforest with one tree or one animal? There are some changes and controversies in our field. Fluency treatment, cut part of the tongue because the tongue is too big, articulation treatment, oral motor, blowing bubbles, face massage, late talkers, no treatment, hearing loss, hearing aids, all the way to cochlear implants, suffer through auditory processing disorder, or sit in a classroom with an FM system. With research, there's the knowledge acquisition, and there are a few ways of knowledge acquisition. The method of tenacity, method of authority, method of intuition, and the method of science. So we equate research with the acquisition of knowledge, and knowledge can be acquired in multiple ways. How do we acquire knowledge? On what basis does one accept new information as accurate and truthful? With the method of tenacity, a person holds firmly to certain beliefs because it is always believed to be true. Repetition of the belief enhances its supposed validity. So the sun rises in the east and sets in the west. Or if you're from a blue state, then you must be a Democrat and support the Democratic Party. Or a bad person is not going to go to heaven. Mother Nature stacks the deck in favor of our old habits, as our oldest habits are the hardest to break. There is a lot of truth in the old saying, you can't teach a dog, new, old dog new tricks. The method of tenacity involves the willful avoidance of circumstances that might stimulate doubt within your current repertoire of beliefs. However, today more than ever, the irritation of doubt is difficult if not impossible, to control. We'll never know if our old beliefs are true or false unless we allow them to compete with new ideas. The method of authority and tenacity both undermine human inquiry and impede our quest for true belief. The method of authority is a minimally superior method to that of the method of tenacity. With the method of authority, a renowned figure, a trusted source designated as authoritative producers of knowledge. So, Mrs. Smith said so. Chomsky said language is pre-programmed in humans. The sun revolves around the earth, because that's what the government says. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration says that this prescription is safe. This method is more successful because much of, it is, much of its authority is based on sound scientific evidence. But the authority could be wrong. For example, the Nazi war atrocities. Or granting authority might not always be justified with the example of celebrity endorsements. The method of intuition is the method of knowing that relies on the use of pure reason based on prior assumptions that are considered to be self-evident with little or no consideration given to the role of experience in the acquisition of knowledge. Self-evident truth is not a valid assumption in a logical system, and if the a priori assumption is incorrect, then the conclusion will be incorrect. So how do we acquire knowledge? 
On what basis does one accept new information as accurate and truthful? There's the method of tenacity, in which you hold firmly to a certain belief because it is always believed to be true. The method of authority, with a renowned figure or a trusted source. So Mrs. Smith said so. The method of intuition, a gut feeling. My gut feeling is that every, everyone will do great in this class. And a priori, formed beforehand without examination, presupposed by experience.